All right, what up YouTube? Time for the 500 mile review. Let me see how many miles I got on this thing. Let's click it on here. Get an info up here. Click your info button one time. Boy, I haven't erased that. So 509 miles. And uh, boy, every time I turn that off, I was down to one bar. And now I turn it back on here after about 30 minute rest and it shows more bars. I guess be careful of that, okay? Cause that's gonna drop down quick once I jump on there, especially if I'm doing any type of power assist. Um, she's gonna get back down to one pretty fast. Sometimes I've noticed though, you know, especially if you stay in the low PAS one or two, that that stays cranked up there for a while. So yeah, I don't know. You saw my, uh, hopefully if you haven't, review it, um, that uh, 450 mile um, review I did on the battery and uh, my last test I did. And I said I got 45 miles after 450 miles. I got 45 miles on a, on a charge, so. That's sufficient to me. Could have could have went 50, I don't know, but uh, definitely 45. Um, but this is it. This is the uh, V3 500 mile review. And I just cleaned her up. And uh, I guess I should start with that. I mean, my suggestions on cleaning kind of the same as I clean my F6B over here. I do very little hose, full hose blasts on my bike. Why? Because I'm just nervous. I'm not an electrical guy. And uh, I don't know how to ref how to fix electrical issues, so <clears throat> I uh, do not mess with water and stuff that's got electricity <laughs> running through it. Uh, in the fear of blowing fuses, blowing things out, because um, I'm not real uh, good with that. So anyway, uh, I did check my connections here. You got a few. Um, you want to check those. I did uh, spray the water. I tr tried it when I use the hose. What little I use on it, I do keep it around the wheels around here and then i usually just use a spray bottle and stuff to kind of wipe everything else down and again trying to stay away from make sure that you uh do your plug here i haven't cut that nipple thing off like i said i was going to but i'm getting kind of used to it's a little off center that's why i was having issues uh, getting that put in but i definitely put that in when i'm uh spraying the bike at all but again mostly i do the you know, spray down by the wheels and clean the wheels and then wipe everything down. I don't like any rust on anything. I think it looks horrible. So OCD, but uh, yeah, I don't want any anything rusting. So I, I dry it is uh, pretty good dry after I um, get everything washed down. And then, you know, a few other connections here. There's one there and then there's like three up here, I believe. And I haven't messed with these. Oh, boy, there's a lot more than that. So I haven't touched any of these, um, it, which leads me to my next point here. I'm definitely an urban rider, okay? I do not go much off-road. Okay, so yeah, definitely an urban rider. Um, I don't go off-road hardly at all. I do take some grass paths uh, around our pond here in the neighborhood, but that's about it. I mean, uh, everything else is pretty much, um, I don't want to poke a hole or get something in my tire, a thorn or anything like that. Uh, cause I do not, haven't done the flat out. I haven't done the slime in my tires at 500 miles, knock on wood. Uh, I haven't done that yet. So, um, and then also being an urban rider, you know, it, when stuff jiggles around, it breaks. Uh, so I'm trying not to, you know, hit big bumps and I'm trying to, you know, I don't want to knock out a shock absorber. All those, these things seem like they can take quite a bit, uh, and I don't have these locked out or anything. Um, so, you know, hopefully I'll never, uh, blow a seal on one of those, just keeping it calm, a little bit more calm. I know I'm not like a lot of folks, I'm older, um, 59, so I'm not out there wanting to do jumps and <laughs> and take this thing on probably on some videos that I saw I can really do some good off-road but uh, I'm not doing that because again I want to extend it without repairs um, the tires again no flat out I think that's what it's called no green slime and um, you know just avoiding the one thing I do do to my tires is I check this pressure once a week seems to be holding pretty good. I mean, I think I lose about a pound in these tires, maybe two 
per week, week and a half. Um, so you definitely want to keep those between 25 and 30. When I check them, uh, I put them up to 30 so I don't have to think about it. Uh, don't want to pinch flat. Uh, I know a lot of people say they just have a sudden ghost flat. What happened? Well, again, my friend said, you know, that's a big mountain biker. It's a pinch flat or it's a thorn or a piece of glass or something. Uh, you just don't get a flat. Um, so, again, trying to avoid the off-road stuff for that. And in the, in the bike lanes, I'm watching out for crap that gets shoved over, of course, from the uh, car lane uh, into the bike lanes. Uh, that can, you know, you're going to have glass and stuff sometimes that gets over into our lane and uh, can damage a tire. Talk about the display for a while. There's a lot of griping about the color display. People are talking about wanting to, you know, change this out and stuff. And, well, guys, I mean, yeah, this is a color display. It's not the brightest in the world. Yes, I do have some trouble under the sunglasses reading if I'm not wearing sunglasses, which I'm always wearing usually eye protection. But if I'm not, um, uh, I, I don't have a trouble in the, you know, almost direct sun. But if I do have um, sunglasses on, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to see. I'm just going to move this over here in the sun. Now, again, you can't really tell on this, but this is really bright sun here coming down, okay? And you're going to see right away that that screen is not the best in the world, okay? But this sun that's coming down in here through my, um, f through my garage or my courtyard garage here is pretty freaking serious. So... Um, I mean, is that more what you're going to be looking at on a normal basis? Probably. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, that's something to say. If there's a negative, I guess it could be that the V3 needs a brighter screen. Would it stop me from buying this sucker? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> this is a great bike. Uh, great value. 750 watts. Uh, bigger than the electric. Uh, whatever their 3.0X, whatever it is. Uh, you know, and they, of course, got the spoked wheels. We've had the cool wheels. Um, so definitely would not let that deter me. Um, that one, probably about the only negative I really got to say about the bike, um, if, if I had one. And again, I can deal with it. Yeah, I pop my sunglasses up sometime to have to see what PAS I'm in. All right. But uh, besides that, I'm, I'm good. Uh, talk about the seat for a minute. You got to have one of these, no doubt about it. Uh, this seat compared to the stock seat is leagues above it. Um, it's not wide as I thought it might be to make me like pedal funny and get my hips in the wrong situation. Uh, I do stand up a lot and rest my behind anyway. Uh, that's fun to do. Um, so, but definitely you, you need this seat. So Sometimes Vitalin will throw that in. They threw two in from my wife and I because they didn't have a white one in stock when we bought it, so we got a black and a gray. Um, so talk to them about that. But this is something you definitely want. Had a little trouble at the beginning with the clamp uh, and keeping the, and this thing getting in the right position. You just really have to tighten that sucker down uh, when you get in the position. And there's teeth on there, too. Um, I don't know if I can let you see it or not. I don't think you can see it really well, but there's teeth on there and you want to make sure right there that those teeth are kind of interlocked to that stem uh, because that, that's it right there. That's the piece. So make sure because that doesn't look like um, it's real tough steel. They are, it is steel, but not, uh, I don't know. It's just, well, I mean, it's little thin lines in there that have to interlock into the stem. So be careful about that. Um, Vidlin was good enough to send me a new stem and right after that I found a position that it got locked in and I haven't used it yet so uh, but that's the seat another must-have of course I've done my accessory video too you got to have one of these especially again if you're doing urban chores uh, meaning you're going to yes I've taken eggs in this thing home from the grocery store pop these saddlebags out man and my gosh look at the room you got on here you know that, <laughs> That throws down. Ooh, what did I leave in there? Oh, that's when I went and got my nachos from Bad Daddy's the other day. <laughs> uh, put the nachos in there and the condiments in here and rocked out. So, uh, yeah, these both drop down and you've got a ton of room for groceries. Uh, I did a video on that on how much I got in there one time, so check that out. But, 
definitely a must have. And this is a cooler in here, guys. This keeps everything really nice and cold. Um, and it's got some pockets and stuff in there. So uh, just a really quick hit on my uh, saddlebag uh, pack there. Got to have it. Great to have this back here. I'd like to get a drink thing up here in the front uh, like my wife's got over on her bike. Um, that'd be a lot more convenient. But I don't find myself drinking too much when I ride. But uh, that would be convenient. I keep telling myself I'm going to get one. But um, we did do a fold-up chore uh, uh, trip to Asheville and did the Biltmore. Went off-road with these things. Did their off-road trails, their on-road trails. Yeah, I was really watching out for thorns. Um, but uh, they had some pretty dicey stuff. Uh, and it handled it fine. And plenty of battery. We rode all day, it felt like, a couple, two, three hours on a... Uh, at Biltmore, we did lunch and things like that, um, and then took it back and did the um, Asheville um, Greenway there along the boardwalk, if you've been to Asheville. Uh, and then we went to downtown Asheville, all in one charging, never charged it, and back from our spot that we were in close to the Greenway from uptown Asheville. So handled it perfect, easy as all get out to get these in and out of the car well, uh, you know, you're going to struggle first couple times you do it uh, with learning how to put them in the back of the car. We put them in the back of the van here, so it was absolutely no issues there. I don't know if I could get both of them in the MKX, but the Honda Odyssey, no problems whatsoever. Didn't even fold down the other two front seats that I could give it some more room, but didn't have to. Um, so just a really great, versatile bike. Um, and the folding was absolutely must for me because I don't like to mess with back racks and things like that. My wife wanted to take one or two day trips. Um, we can throw those in the back and uh, head on down the road. And again, just more upkeep, of course, after I get done doing my cleaning. And I've said this before in other videos, but if you haven't seen them, I do give these uh, the derailers uh, and the um, chain just not not chain lube i just hit it with the wd-40 i know again that's bad probably people are out there saying chain lube chain lube but seems to work out fine uh just dousing it with that oh i did want to mention too the brakes you know these have the brake pads on it guys just like i have to do on this and i do my maintenance on my motorcycle and keep an eye on those brake pads making sure they don't get down start digging into your rotors and i don't know if it's a bigger re big repair like if you mess up your rotors on a bike or a car on a motorcycle or a car if those things cost that much money to repair but again it's pulling off the wheel and doing what you got to do um Vidalin actually sent me a link i told him my brake pads on my wife's were actually wearing down uh quicker than mine did um so I i've got a maybe they've got a video too on making sure how to center these to make sure they're centered that you put a piece of metal in or whatever. But it's a really quick uh, uh, fix to get these off. You just, they said you got to take these off, these two bolts off. I don't even know if you really got to do that to change the pads, but I'm going to because it's so easy. So you take those two bolts out, you pull the whole thing off. There's a cotter pin. I'll let you see this right here. There's a cotter pin right here on the brake pad. You pop that out, you take that little, uh, unit out and you change them. Uh, my pads on here look pretty good, but I went ahead and ordered two sets of them uh, to be ready to change them when I need to. Again, her front left one wore down pretty quick, so keep an eye on that. Um, I don't want you scratching up your rotor and uh, having to replace that thing you know, before it's ready. So uh, that's a quick uh, tip there for you on the uh, brake pads. So tires, I mean, 500 miles, I mean, you know, these things aren't knobby knobby when you buy them, but I don't really see too much difference, I don't think, on when they were uh, brand new. So uh, hopefully I got some more wear out of them because, uh, quite honestly, I had never pulled a... Uh, wheel off and replaced a tire, especially on this or even on a regular bike. Uh, it's been years if I did it, it was, I was 16. Um, so it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I'm sure Vitalin has, uh, they send you videos on anything, any repair, or they have on me. 
uh, pretty quickly. So I'm sure they got one on changing the tire too. So um, that's something that'll happen down the line though. Uh, hopefully, as long as I keep these uh, keep these things properly inflated and stay out of the thorn uh, stuff. But, um, and, uh, you know, I guess last but not least, I want to talk about the gears here a little bit. Um, I guess if, if there's one thing, another thing, small thing that I think I would say is, you know, once I get up to on a straightaway I'm talking about, okay, I, I got to clarify that. If I'm going straight and I'm in PAS2, I can do 16 miles an hour quickly and then I'm kind of ghost pedaling here. You've heard me talk about that. It's just you don't have any resistance whatsoever. I guess some people are putting a more a bigger one of these on, bigger sprocket on this front. And uh, they're solving that where they're going to get resistance. I mean, I don't know how. I've never heard. But if I could get resistance at 20, 25 miles an hour, that'd be really cool. Um, and I think that would help battery. Uh, you're actually, um, you know, doing more... Uh, pedal assisting uh, in the um, higher levels, you know, the three and the four, if I can still feel, feel resistance doing, like I said, uh, 20, 25 miles an hour, I'd feel good. I mean, if I felt resistance at 30, I'd feel real good. And I bet that would increase that uh, battery power too. So that's one thing I might uh, investigate a little bit more. Of course, you got to get on the <clears throat> chat thread that's on Facebook for the Vitalin, you get a lot of good info on that. So if you bought one uh, or you're thinking about buying one, uh, check out that uh, Facebook uh, chat thread. It's uh, really good and informative. Well, that's it, guys. I think I'll wrap it up there. Uh, that's your 500-mile review on the Vitalin V3. And if you got any questions, hit them at the comment. I'm going to put a link down there where you can buy one, too, if you like it. And uh, hit like if you like these videos and whatever or just leave me a comment, man. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Later, YouTube.